Okay, so hi guys, I'm June Dulesky. I am 10 years old and going into sixth grade. So I will be like a teacher and call on you guys when I do, you introduce yourself and the book that you're promoting. And Valerie, talk about your profession and stuff. Okay, so first, Shannon. Okay, so my name is Shannon Wright. I'm a cartoonist and illustrator and the book that I'm promoting is Twins. Um, it's coming out in October and I feel like it's been coming out forever and I can't wait for it to come out. And just like you mentioned earlier, June, they're going to sixth grade and they are exploring new friends, just exploring middle, middle school. So I'm super excited for you to check it out and for everyone to check it out. And uh, for me to like actually have a book that's out. <laughs> <laughs> I love graphic. I read them like every day. Okay, so next let's do Sophie or yeah, Sophie. Hi everyone. So my name is Sophie Escabas. I am a cartoonist. I write and draw uh, graphic novel. I'm also an illustrator. I make uh, um, drawings for other people, books and ideas and mm -hmm. projects and things. And I'm a mom of, I have three amazing kids that are an incredible source of inspiration and always my first readers. <laughs> the book I'm promoting is The Witches of Brooklyn. Here, Ooh, here. <laughs> and it's the story of a young girl named Afi that you can see on the cover that is coming to live in Brooklyn with her aunt after the death of her mother. And uh, she's, it's the story of uh, of these three women, like the aunt and her friend and Effie, learning to live together and uh, getting to know each other. And um, it's the story of Effie, like facing a lot of challenges. Oh my God, the storm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of challenges, a new school, a new city, new friends, new everything. And on the top of that, she will soon discover that her aunt and her friend are not just herborists and acupuncturists, but they're really witches. And so is Hefi herself. She didn't know about that until she showed up in Brooklyn. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, with her mystical and stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, Valerie. Uh, my name is Valerie Burley. I'm a middle school librarian in Central Texas. And I have been teaching for 19 years. Mm, amazing. Not <laughs> <laughs> for the librarians. We always thank you. Love thank you. <laughs> Yeah, students can be really hard. I, I <laughs> <laughs> you're a survivor. I love <laughs> uh, Maria. Hi, I'm Maria Scrivan, and I'm a cartoonist. And I'm here to talk about Not Enough and the sequel to Not Enough, Forget Me Not, which <laughs> comes out in September. Not Enough came out in April, and Forget Me Not's coming out on September 1st. And they're both about sixth grade, and it's a continuation of the same school year. And Not Enough is about Natalie, who doesn't think she's athletic enough or talented enough, and it turns out she's not cool enough for her best friend, Lily, who dumps her on the first day of school. So Natalie has a little bit of adventure learning about who she is and what a real friend is and what bullies are and the fact that her biggest bully can be herself in the form of self-criticism and self-doubt. And Forget Me Nat picks up on the second half of the year and that focuses on crushes. And Natalie learns a little bit more about herself in that book. Oh, yeah, I read that book. It, it seemed super real and I loved it. Oh, okay. good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Can I introduce myself? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, my name is Shannon Dulesky. <laughs> I had to I had to butt in there, but um, my name is Shannon Dulesky, and I'm one of the organizers of Middle Ground Book Fest. And when we were setting it up, I said, you know, we really, really need a graphic novel panel. I'm super passionate about it, not as a writer of it, but because she's super passionate about her art and about reading graphic novels. And it's the way that my children have learned to love reading. So I really wanted to highlight you guys and how great you are and, and the beautiful like synergy you bring to kids in reading. I love it. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of be here for tech support. So I'm gonna let her take over now. If I'm gonna take over now. Okay, so this is a question for Valerie. Can you tell us about what the kids think of graphic novels? Do the teachers let kids take off graphic novels? 
because my teacher didn't count them as timed reading, and I didn't like that. I think perfect novels like count as reading. <laughs> I would agree with you that graphic novels count as reading. But I do have teachers that feel the same way that your teachers um, do. And what they say is a graphic novel is like checking out a dessert book. And then they guide the students to the fiction section where you have chapter books like without pictures and say like that's the book that they are expected to read in class. Um, and it, it's very hard to watch because I know how much students love graphic novels. And it's definitely the gateway to reading for so many of our students. They feel just like you. They they love the pictures. Um, they love the stories. Um, they feel a lot of emotion when they're reading the books. Um, so it's disappointing to see. And I hope um, as time goes on and I get more and more graphic novels that they start to see that they are actual books in a different format. Yeah, you seem super passionate about that. Thank you. You're welcome. I love them. <laughs> So this is the question for the novelist. How did you start becoming an, art, an artist? And what advice would you give a kid who wants to become a graphic novelist or artist? Um, I, I can go first, um, if that's okay. So <laughs> I, I started super young and I feel like that's like the generic answer where you're just like, I was four years old and I just picked up a pencil and started drawing and that was pretty much it. I drew cartoons. I like Pokemon was out during then. So I was like drawing all the Pokemon at all the times. And I was like, I need to draw more, more cartoons, more cartoons. And so I was like copying everything. And my like art teacher at the time, Miss Flues, she would always tell my parents, she was like, yeah, that girl, she's an artist. She's, she's doing art and that's what she's going to do. And I just kept at it. And I'm really like appreciative of my family for nurturing and supporting that um, because that doesn't happen often or like all the time. And so that really made the difference. And so, yeah, I've just been drawing since I can remember. Like, I don't remember a time when I wasn't drawing. I was drawing in school. I was drawing at church. I was drawing in the car. I was drawing before bed when I woke up. <laughs> it was just whatever I could get my hands on. And um, I would say for like a kid trying to get into making graphic novels, because as you know, June, as everyone knows, they're hefty, they're, they're big books. I would say start small, like start small, make maybe like four panels first and like do that. And then, you know, move up to maybe like a two page comic and then a four page comic, then like an eight page comic. And it's like going to the gym, you know, you're like working up those muscles, working up those muscles until you can tackle like a 200 page book. <laughs> and, and yeah, so that's, that's my advice. I would say like start small and just start making stories about your favorite things or Maybe you going to the mall or you going to get ice cream and just like recording that and just practicing and then you'll make a graphic novel. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, thank you. That sounds very me. Okay, how about next we do, Sophie? I guess, I mean, it's a little bit like you said, Shannon. I've been, I can't point out like when I become an artist, I feel that I've been drawing for, drawing for as long as I can remember. Uh, I was that kid always drawing for, you know, everyone, like my sister, my, my classmate, my, my cousin. And, um, and I guess that soon became part of who I was. I mean, that was part of my identity. And, uh, you know, I was really enjoying doing it and seeing like people around me liking it and, and being cool with that. I was like, oh my God, that's, that's it. You know, that's, I think I found my spot in the world. I love doing that. That's what I want to do. And, um, and I never stopped since then, really. So that would probably be my advice. You know, if you want to be an artist, if you want to make graphic novel, do it. You know, if you want to be an artist, you have to make art. And and as Shannon was saying, you know, the, the more things you do, the more creation you bring out into the world, the more proof you have that you are an artist and it's working. And it's like, yay, and you want to keep on doing it. So really just, do it. Never, ever stop. Just do, 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 and and read. Read as many graphic novels that you can find from as many different people, different places in the world, all kind of things that you can feed yourself with. Go for it. Because um, one of the amazing things with graphic novel is that it's, uh, 
it's a job with, where you wear a lot of different hats. You know, it's not just drawing and writing, it's also coloring and lettering. So there's so many things that you can find out there to inspire you. I, I can really relate to that because when I tried drawing like realistic, I just had to tell myself to do it instead of like searching up a strategy or whatever. So thank you. Um, <laughs> next, Maria. Okay, um, so everybody said everything I'm thinking as well. Um, from childhood, I I was always drawing and writing, and I also anytime there was an opportunity to do in a creative assignment. If the teacher said a creative assignment, there was a hundred percent chance I was doing a comic. And even as in sixth grade, I there's a part of Not Enough where she does a book contest, and that was inspired from a book contest that I entered when I was a kid. And a lot, a lot of that book is from my own life. But even in um, in AP English in in uh, high school, I made a mock cliff notes of all the books we were supposed to read in oceanography class. I did a journal of everything that I saw and described it. So mm. it's just inherent to me. Like I can't I can't help myself, and I'm very visual, so I kind of write and draw at the same time. And I just to echo what everybody said: to draw a lot, write a lot. But to add to that, I'd also say have fun because I think the best work comes when you're playing and when you're really having a good time, people can feel that. Not to say drawing and writing isn't hard, it is. It's a constant learning thing, but still when you're in your work, have fun because people can see that and feel that and you feel it and you can feel that energy come right off the page. That's true. Yeah. You seem very devoted. Thank you for <laughs> I'm not definitely passionate about that. <laughs> Okay, so this question's for Valerie. Um, a graphic novel, New Kid by Jerry Craft, won the Newbery last year. Has anything changed since then or no? Not really. Hmm. Um, one thing that we did on our campus is we did a Read It Forward project and I ordered 50 copies of New Kid. And I think what's gonna change on my campus, what's gonna help the teachers understand uh, students really love graphic novels is my teachers starting to read graphic novels themselves because a lot of them didn't grow up with that as an option. They went straight from small chapter books that you had in elementary into larger chapter books. And so um, while the, the honor is very prestigious, the awards, um, I don't think that's going to have as much clout with my teachers as just getting um, graphic novels into the hands of the students and letting the teachers start to experience those stories themselves. Yes. <laughs> thank you for liking graphic novels so much. I I'm, love them. I'm going to say thank you after like each question. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So novelist, do you assign a co color scheme to the personality of your main character? And did you end up using that color? And what color was it? Um, I, I, I guess we can go in the same order again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for, for, for me, I didn't really assign a specific color to any characters. I, I will say in the book, since um, Maureen and Francine are twins, I did give them like their favorite colors. Um, so Maureen's favorite color is purple. And then um, Francine's favorite color is blue. And so their bed sheets reflect that. Um, their, their, uh, their dresses and like some of their clothing reflects that. And then they alternate between that. So you can see that relationship between them where like now they're switching, like Francine has purple and then the other person has blue. Um, but yeah, so I wanna say I, I gave a specific person a color besides the twins, but there are scenes in the book where I did use color on a page um, to show like an emotion. So there's like a, there's a scene where, Fran, um, no, Maureen, uh, see, I'm getting them confused. <laughs> that whole point of the book, um, <laughs> but there is a scene where Maureen is upset and to show just how upset she was, I decided to just do the whole page in monochromatic red um, to show like this anger that she was feeling because she was heated, she was, she was upset and and also the panels in that scene are very jagged, um, whereas the rest of the book, everything's very um, vertical, horizontal, very clean cut. And then in that scene, it's very jagged. So you can 
definitely feel like these emotions she's, she's feeling. And so that like resonates with students, you know, colors play a big part in a lot of us on how we're feeling. Um, it's not always the case, but you know, most of the time red, people associate that with anger, blue, scared, sadness, and then so on and so on. So there are scenes in Twins where I took advantage of that, where I was just like, this character uh, is inside of their head feeling very scared. Let's just make the whole color palette blue, like, cause a student's gonna, or uh, any person is gonna relate to that. They're gonna say, yeah, I felt very chilling at that time or very heated at that time. So yeah, that's, that's how I go about assigning colors for um, comics and stuff, so. Yeah, so, I feel um, like colors play a very, go oh, ahead, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I feel like colors um, play a very important mm -hmm. role in art and stuff, but uh, yeah, I like to, wait. I liked how you chose red for the upset upsetting scene thank you <laughs> thank you okay wow. next sophie um so i didn't really assign a color like uh shame for it i mean for for my characters color is a tricky um is the tricky part for me really it's like it's that stage of the work when i'm like Ugh, because i i am not it doesn't come to me naturally. I mean, some people are magical with color. They can just go poof, 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 and they find an harmony, and it looks great, and I'm not that person at all. So it, it takes me some time to really, like, it took me a lot of time for The Witches of Brooklyn to develop, like, a palette that I was comfortable with. Uh, it's definitely something that I thought ahead of time. I'm not just sitting, you know, and looking at the page and go poof, poof, poof. No, no, that's not how it works. I, I thought ahead of time, prepared, like, for each character the palette. And um, I didn't, as Shannon was explaining, like did like pages, like red for color. I didn't quite follow the emotions of the character with the colors, but it's true that my um, the older witches are both very different in, uh, in in characters. I mean, one is very bubbly and uh, and very loud and, and quite crazy, and the other one is much calmer and sweet and patient. So I have like a pastel kind of palette for the calmer one and the color are more lively and brighter on the on the on the cuckoo one um, <laughs> otherwise i mean one thing one trick i did with color in uh, witches of brooklyn just for a couple of pages there's a character that is sharing a memory and what i did on those pages is that i toned down the 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 colors just to show that the, that was in parentheses you know we weren't in the same time frame than the rest of the story um, so I guess, yeah, that's a trick of color I did with that book. Yeah, I like how you uh, use the personality to do the colors. Okay, uh, Maria. So I guess I didn't really specifically assign each character having a certain color. Um, Lily, her best friend slash ex-best friend, really loved the color purple, so there's sort of that theme. Natalie gravitated toward pink, and there was sort of an an underlying theme of her, there's sort of an idea of, of her under, fall, sort of like self-love. So that idea of pink is such a loving color. And in certain scenes when she felt really lonely, there's one scene I'm thinking of in particular where she was so lonely without her friend and she's standing on top of a mountaintop. And I, I hand painted these in watercolor. So I kind of let the watercolor take over, but I did a really mm. muted soft gray to kind of show this like internal and external feeling of cloudiness, like a cloud literally hanging over her head and like she was absorbed by this cloud. So I definitely think that the color has a huge influence and I love bright colors and color is one of my favorite things. So I can't help myself, but <laughs> put bright colors everywhere, like the pink wall behind me. So. <laughs> Yeah, I love how you guys like uh, color so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a question for the novelist. What comes first, the art or the words? And if you have a co-author, how does that work? Okay, Shannon. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's normally the words first. Um, despite the fact that I was the illustrator on this book, I do make my own content and I do make my own comics and stuff. Um, and also Barry and I were kind of really like collaborative. We were like very collaborative. Cool. But 
Um, yeah, for me, it's normally the words first. I like try to get out those ideas because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what is happening in this scene. Um, but then I also kind of do doodles on the side. But yeah, for, for, for me, it's normally words first and then I attach the pictures to it. Um, and then again, since Barian's the co-writer, he gave me the, the words first and then I tackled it together. With, well, we, we talked first because I wanted to make sure I, we were coming to an agreement um, on what he wanted to visualize and what I thought was uh, needed to be visualized. And yeah, it, it turned out to be like a, like a beautiful, a beautiful team. Like it, it worked out really well. And I'm very, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm very happy because sometimes it doesn't happen. <laughs> but um, no, I love working with Varian on this book. And I, I think that comes through with like the words and the pictures, just creating this beautiful marriage together. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sophie. Um, I liked I liked your, your your explanation on the color and the teamwork. I've never worked with someone else like writing for me, and I I'm looking. I would love that to happen. And um, when I listen to you talking about it, I'm like, yeah, that's not amazing. Um, but for me, in my process, I think it's it's the pictures first. I mean, the art comes first. I uh, I I'm very much character driven, and I kind of need to see. The, the character to to have it like start talking to me basically i mean it sounds a bit uh, esoteric but that's really what happened i mean i start drawing and the, the, the and giving give shape to a character and then and then he will start telling his story or her story in that case hmm. <laughs> i understand where you're coming from okay <laughs> <laughs> next yeah uh, so I'm going to do an amalgam of all of that. And I start with a really rough outline because I kind of need a map. It serves as a very loose map of where is the story going? What's kind of going to basically happen? And usually by the time I'm done, that outline is gone. After, by the time the outline's done several iter iterations and the drafts have done several iterations, that's kind of gone. But when it comes down to it, very much like what Sophie said, I need to see the character to know what they're going to say. So I do a really rough writing drawing process and it's back and forth uh, between yeah, the, sure. the drawing and the words. So I start with really, my roughs are so rough that you may not even know who the character is in that moment, but it also comes to me so quickly that I have to write it down as fast as possible. So I kind of <laughs> just throw it all on the page and then I go back in, refine, refine, refine. So it's a little bit of both for me. Cool. Intense. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is a question for everyone. Why do you guys love graphic novels? And I'll start with Maria first this time. Okay. Um, I love graphic novels because I can't help but write and draw at the same time. So there's that. But also there's so many extra levels of depth and you can learn so much more about a character by the most subtle body language or or expression or cues. And also I love humor in my work. So this idea that I can hide little Easter eggs mm -hmm. all over the place and layers of humor. And that I find that I hear over and over again, the kids just want to read graphic novels over and over and over again. Because each time they go through, there's something else that they see. So it's kind of like, it's a new adventure each time. Mm -hmm. So that's oh. why I like it. And I know June, like June does that all the time. She rereads the same ones yeah. over and over and she's like oh i found this new thing or yeah i love that that's cool great okay let's do sophie next yeah i i i, I mean i couldn't agree more it's uh, it's for me a graphic novel is the best medium of storytelling ever i mean it's uh, it's simply magical you know it's like you have, having like the, 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 the illustration and, and the words and all that dancing together to bring you a story is just incredible. I mean, it's like, I, I love it. Each time you open a graphic novel, it's a different artist and a, a different, you know, um, palette and everything. It's a world in itself. And what I really like is that you, a little bit, it's a bit like the experience you have in a book. You know, when you have open a book, it's it's you create this very intimate bubble. It's uh -huh. not like you know when you go to um, the movie theater to see a movie. It's amazing, but you're there with like fifty or sixty other people, and it's like yeah, you, we're all having this big experience. But with a graphic novel, you're like it's your bubble, and, and you're like entering that world, and it's as 
visual as it is like, you know, with words and, and dialogues. I'm a big fan of dialogues too. So it's, I love it. And you can do so many things with graphic novel. You know, you can play with time, go back and forth and everything's possible. You can do science fiction. It doesn't cost you anything. It's the, I love it. I love it. You explained it that so like inspiring. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's do Shannon next. Um, yeah, I'm gonna echo pretty much what everyone else has said. Um, graphic novels, I don't know. I get so excited when a new graphic novel comes out. I just, like for me, I'm just like, I have so much I can read because it's like, I get a comic and I'm like, oh, I'm done with it. And then it's just, like, I get a graphic novel and it's just like a hefty meal. And I'm just like, mm. This is tasty. I can't wait to read this. And then I just I just sit and read it and I just gobble it up. And you get to fall in love with these characters. You get to fall into their world. You get to just like experience this for like the long, like the long haul. And it it's so magical. And like I can stop and then come back. And I'm just like, I still have so much more to go through. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I <laughs> I think I'm just like, they, they take my breath away. And like you said, Sophie, they feel like just the best of both worlds. They they just feel like the best medium because I'm getting the writing, I'm getting the story, but I'm also getting these visuals and people do so many magical things with them. I I, like, I'm, I, I, I'm just learning from graphic novels every time. And I'm just like, I want to get better. I want to be better. <laughs> yes, yes. And, yeah, oh, yes. And I'm, in like all these different styles like i'm seeing people just work in straight pencils with like a watercolor wash or they're doing digital or they're just doing inks or they're just doing like pencil work and i'm just i don't know i i like i'm in love with graphic novels they, they <laughs> make i i don't even i mean i look at some other books but i just rush to the aisle whenever i go to book places. <laughs> i'm just like don't talk to me i'm going to the graphic novel section um and i just i just I just take them and just run with them and just sit down with them. Sorry to my other books that I haven't read yet, but I've read all my <laughs> You're so passionate. Yeah, you gobble up the knowledge about graphic novels. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Valerie? What I love about graphic novels is I feel like I have more not necessarily a relationship, but I get to know the author or the artist in a way that I don't if I'm just reading that has traditional words and chapters. Um, and it has so much more of an emotional impact. Like when I finish gobbling up, like Shannon said, when I finish gobbling up my graphic novels, um, like Sophie and Maria said, I feel like I've been to another world in a completely different way. I absolutely love fantasy. And I love reading, like, the bigger the book, the better. But graphic <laughs> novels is just a completely different experience. And it's wonderful to go on that experience with students and watch them connect with books, several of them for the first time. Um, and to, to have them make an emotional connection to a book is a wonderful thing. Ooh, I liked how you explained it. How you explained it? Is that the past tense? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. I love you. Oh, I like them because I like aesthetics and I, I, you know, I was just going to call you out on some questions and then you did it to me before I could. Um, I really like aesthetics. Like I love style and I, she's always like, you need to do a graphic novel. I'm like, yeah, I know, but it's like, I can't just like do that. So I'm I'm waiting until she's a little older so we can do one together. But Yay. yeah, that'll, that'll be good. Um, so I wanted to ask one question to kind of wrap us up. And I'm going to start with June because we haven't told you this question. But what is your recent favorite graphic novel you've read? And what's one you're really excited to read that maybe isn't out yet or will be coming out or one you just haven't read yet in general? June, what about you? So I like a lot of um, fantasy graphic novel books. Um, 
the one I'm reading recently is this thing called Snapdragon. She like befriends this wolf and collects roadkill. It's really weird. <laughs> but I like um I'm excited for all of you, your all of y'all's books and I also really like not not enough too. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. Okay. Um Shannon? Um, so I think the most recent, let me look back. The most I recent, have the old bookshelf. I know. Hold on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the most recent graphic novel I read or in finished was This Is Our Pack by Ryan Andrews. That one was amazing. And I've always loved his 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 artistry and just how he draws and it it like follows these two boys and they go on this like mystical adventure and meet some bear and it's colored so beautifully it's like mostly in blues and it's it's really thick too and it was it was like it it was everything i needed it like scratched that itch i had and i i just fell in love with it i i i had started it and then something came up and i was like i need to go back and then i <laughs> And I did in a single night <laughs> and it was amazing. So that was, that's the graphic novel that I most recently finished, I believe. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to everyone's graphic novels here, you know, ready to spend more money. <laughs> hey, uh, Sophie. Um, recently I got very excited by um, Stepping Stone by Lucy Nisley that I got to read. Um, I'm not sure if it's out on, I think it's out. Uh, I think, I mean, she's brilliant. I really, really love her work. She's uh, she's amazing. And um, I really like the Prince and the Dressmaker from Jen Wong. I, yes. I mean, that really like got me completely. I loved it. And her heart is incredible. She's, she's so great. Um, I'm excited to see the last of the five worlds. I don't know if you've read those guys. I mean, the the, the series is not complete yet, so I'm ex I'm waiting for that one. Um, I don't know. I cannot look because all my books are packed. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a. I mean, there's so many things out right now. Amazing. I mean, Random House has so many amazing titles coming out that I'm very excited about. Yeah, I read uh, the girl in the dressmaker. Uh, the prince in the dressmaker. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh wait, were you were you gonna say more? Did uh, I cut you off? <laughs> no, no, no. Please go. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, Maria. Uh, so there's so many things, amazing things coming out, and I'm so excited for all of your guys' graphic novels. I can't wait to read them now, and. Also, um, I just read Phantom, I'm in the middle of it, I should say, Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown, which is just beautifully drawn and really interesting. It's a story about co-joined twins and has this really interesting circus theme to it, which is really cool. And I'm really excited to see um, Class Act, the sequel to New Kid, which is coming out. And Jerry Craft is sort of a neighbor of mine. He lives in Norwalk, a couple towns over, which is kind of cool. Um, and we've met up before the world was locked down, but um, I'm really excited to see the sequel to that. And um, then Witches by Penelope, I'm gonna say her last name wrong. I'm really excited yeah, for that. Thank you, Penelope, thank you, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't want yes, to appreciate yes, that. I didn't want to for that one too. But that looks really beautiful too. I mean, it's hard, there's so many. I, my mind always goes blank when you ask me a question like that because I'm like, oh, there's so much great stuff. So yeah, it's really exciting. There's a lot of really great stuff coming out, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, Valerie. I am currently on volume five of the Amulet series. Mm -hmm. I am in love with the artwork and the story <laughs> and feel like what I think Maria had said that I'm gonna need to go back and read it again uh, because there's a lot of things that I'm not getting the first time because I'm just in love with it. And I'm looking forward to reading Twins. I actually listened to a panel that Shannon was on um, and my dad is an identical twin. So, and oh, I have cool. twins at school that I'm excited to give the book to as well. So, yay! yay. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. I'm so excited. 
Well, thank you everybody for being here. I, I'm so excited for kids to see this in their classrooms. Other sixth graders, other eight to 14 year olds, we're so lucky to have you. And thanks again for, thank for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay.